Well, good morning. Back to 444. Just let me say that uh, I spent two plus hours last night at the beach uh, at a bonfire in a drum circle. My feet were buried in six inches or more of sand the entire, virtually the entire time, except for walking there and walking back. Um, so I was really grounding myself yesterday, as well as exposing myself to the air, fire, water, and earth, the elements of creation, uh, listening to the sounds of the, of the wonderful drummers. I didn't bring my own drum because I just wanted to soak in the energy. I got to watch a couple performers with the fiery hula hoops <laughs> and, uh, and other fire tricks. Uh, it was quite quite an impressive evening. The title for today is the result of what I woke up with, as you'll see when I read the blurb. The title is Team Loyalty and Mounting Corruption. The ideas that were flowing as I woke up this morning dealt with team loyalty and how misplaced values have led to mounting corruption. Many examples flowed as my contemplation continued for over an hour before getting out of bed. Winning at any cost seems to be at the center of all corruption. Let's see, I forgot the S on seems. Of the fraud that permeates human culture. Many cliches tell the same story. Might makes right. He who has the most wins. The end justifies the means. We're looking for team players. And more would probably come to mind if I thought long and hard enough. This is how ideals become corrupted and how natural cosmic law gets pushed aside in favor of expediency. What's in it for me? Is you, if humanity is going to survive and thrive, our values have to go beyond the paradigm of greed and the insanity of self-serving. To me, the legitimate question is, who does it hurt? Psychopaths do not ask that question. We have, we all have a little bit of psychopath in us. That part of us needs to be healed, delivering us from the spirit of competition and liberating us to the spirit of cooperation. Yes, indeed. There are many, many things that came to mind as I was contemplating this subject and where it came from, I don't know. I mean, I wasn't laying there trying to think, what am I going to talk about today? I mean, as soon as I woke up and, and my thoughts became somewhat focused, this was the topic, this was the subject. Now, like the rest of you, I'd like to see cascading corruption, which is actually the word that I had in the title first. But then I re realized that cascading meant a diminishment. So I, I changed it to mounting corruption. However, as I'm sitting here, just as the time approaches when I begin the video and turn the camera on, I'm wondering if there was not a message in the word cascading that Spirit is trying to show me that there's actually an erosion or a wearing away, a cascading effect of the corruption on the planet. I sure hope that that's the truth. But I'm going to talk a little bit today so that we can have a little bit of introspection on how we might have contributed or still be contributing to the corruption because Nothing exists all by itself. Everything is interconnected. And the victim and the victimizer are wed and bound to each other, each, as it were, almost needing the other to maintain it, the survival of its status quo, the status quo of victim or the status quo of victimizer. Anyway, uh, part of my thoughts went to uh, the whole idea of law and the Bar Association, which is what my video was about yesterday. And I realize how the bankers, by creating the Bar Association from the City of London, based on the Emperor's Law, which is also known as Canon Law or Maritime Law, where the Emperor's Law is the law, the Emperor's Word is the law. Whatever the Emperor wants, you know, the emperor gets because that's the law of the emperor. That's the admiralty law. That's the military law. And we've been under military law for a long time. Civil law honors the rights of people. Military law does not. Military law is about 
these are the rules, you have to follow them, period. But in any case, the bankers created this legion of attorneys, bar certified attorneys, British accredited rest registry attorneys, and set them loose on the world to wreak havoc. Because what they've done is they've undermined all system of just governance. They've undermined constitutional limitations in those areas where there were actual constitutions created that were intended, or at least on the face, intended to protect human rights. But of course we see from what has happened in our world to, up to the present time is that the rights were not protected. The only rights that were protected were the rights of the corporations, the rights of the ones that wanted to control everything and what's in it for me was the attitude. And if you're on our team, you're going to have to play by our rules. And this whole thing of, of loyalty to a team and loyalty to a, an idea, regardless of, of who it hurts, regardless of the consequences, regardless of whether or not it's sustainable, this has undermined in the entire human uh, structure and the entire human experience and has created a dog-eat-dog -dog world where and dogs don't eat dogs, do they? I don't think. But in any case, uh, humans do. Humans devour one another without even giving it a thought because it's expedient to do so, because I want to win, because I don't want to lose, because I want what's best for me. And like the, like the attorney said to the arbitrator early on in my lawsuit back eight years ago or so, you know, who who cares about who cares about uh, values when you have children to put through college? In other words, the most important thing is I've got to get all the money that I can get, and it doesn't matter who I hurt in the process, because what really matters is that I'm able to uh, to provide for my kids the same indoctrination, the same uh, brainwashing that I've been subjected to, so that they can be like me and not care who it hurts. Now, in Florida, I think around 2000, now I didn't check all the facts on this, but this is what was coming to me, because I, things that I've read in the past, or maybe watched a video in the past, about, uh, I'm told, or I remember anyway, some, reading something or seeing something to the effect that the Florida, state of Florida, the legislators, who are mostly attorneys, uh, gave the court system over to the Bar Association so that the Bar Association, the Florida Bar Association, actually runs the courts. You want to know something else? They actually own the courts and the courts are for profit. Do you want to know something else? The judges are part of that profit structure. And do you know where they get their retirement income from? Mortgage-backed securities. So the bankers have put the put themselves and the attorneys have put themselves in bed with the bankers so that these are uh, two, en two entities that are working together as one to produce tyranny on the earth and allow them the right, the right and the privilege to steal from other people. It doesn't matter who it hurts. It doesn't even matter if you have a mortgage on the property that they're trying to steal. Lots of things don't matter because they have padded the rules to favor themselves. This is corruption. This is how it works at every level in our culture. But it begins with the psychopath in us that believes in order to survive, it has to take, 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 take. It's competing constantly with itself and with everything and everyone around it. This is the psychopath in me. It's the psychopath in you. It's the distorted part of our being. It's not the way we were made to be. Humans, if you watch most children, not all children, but if you watch most children, they, not that they share completely, that's not true, but they get over things quickly and they do they do 
at least from what I've seen, there isn't a natural empathy with their friends and, and with people around them. Now, there's the bullies, always the bullies, the psychopaths that, that for whatever reason, seem to develop at an early age and become the, the playground bully or the one that wants to steal the other kid's lunch money or stuff like that. These are the things that we need to look at and that we need to heal and we need to say, where am I in this? Or more precisely, where is this in me? How am I contributing to the face of the world where corruption mounts and mounts and mounts till it becomes so unbearable that everyone is ill at ease, including, including those that are the perpetrators of the whole thing? Because as things get become bad, more and more people wake up and as more and more people wake up, the elite get threatened because they realize that the only way that they can keep their game going, keep the status quo uh, moving ahead, is by keeping the people asleep. And as people wake up and start realizing how the game is played, they start focusing light on what's wrong, at least sane people do. Of course, there's the insane spiritual teaching that says you don't focus on that, and that's part of what holds it in place, by the way. The people that that listen to the Mujis of the world and everything is an illusion and buy into the bullshit that we're not supposed to do anything in the political sense that, you know, that's supposed to be God's work and, and God will take care of it and we just trust God and, you know, all of this thing of avoid and de deny and, and it's ignorance. It's ignoring the problem which does not heal anything, does not bring anything positive out of it. It does not bring transformation. It does not bring change that you can believe in. Instead, it just maintains things the way they are because you're unwilling to get involved. You're unwilling to do your part, to play your role. And the biggest role that you can play is recognizing these tendencies in yourself, recognizing these archetypes of wanting to be the perpetrator, wanting to be the one in charge, wanting to be the ruler, if you will. This is the attitude that permeates victimhood and, uh, or I should say, perpetrates victimhood on everything else. And it's time that if we, if we want the world to get better, if we want corruption to cascade instead of mount, we're going to have to learn to cooperate first within ourselves by, again, embracing our own weaknesses, embracing our shadow by recognizing and not saying, that's not me, that's not me, and putting the blame somewhere out there where you never take responsibility for what's happening in your own life. This is, can you see that this is how things have gotten out of control? It's all based on attitude. It's all based on how you perceive the world around you and how you, how you perceive yourself in that world. If it's you against the world, you're constantly at warfare, well then there's maybe there's something wrong with that. And you you might say to me, and as I just said, ask my own self the question, Ron, are you constantly at war with the world? Well, I'm at war with the part of the world that continuously makes wrong choices, that continuously met, you know, chooses priorities that that diminish and disempower and impoverish the human soul. I'm at war with that which takes away our birthright, which takes away our dignity, which takes away our compassion for one another, which takes away our ability to see the interconnectedness of everything rather than the separation of everything that pits everything against everything else. So no, I'm against principles in the world that have led to, have led and are leading to our potential destruction because I want to lift the world out of that mentality. I want to be lifted myself out of that mentality so that I can help contribute to the co-creation of a world that works for all of us. Not just some of us, but all of us. And if I could, I would re redeem every part of creation. I wouldn't throw any of it away. But as long as you have people in charge of the way that things work in the world. These are people that need to be quarantined at least for a time till they, till they either 
die of old age or else repent and recognize the evil of their own psychopathy and recognize the evil of choosing things because they enrich you but harm everyone else. Do no harm is the basis of cosmic law. Do no harm, do not violate the free will of anyone else. Basic, basic principles of cosmic law, of universal law, of natural law, and yet we have not obeyed the basis, the essence of what is real and what is true. Yes, we are individuals. Yes, it, it appears we are separate. But if we compete with each other and tear each other down and not worry about how our choices and our actions affect others, we're going to keep getting the corruption that we've witnessed very prevalently at the end of the 20th century and here in the early years of the 21st century. We're going to keep getting what we've always gotten and ultimately we're not going to have a planet to survive on or we're not going to survive and the planet will. Whatever, whichever comes first, there's not going to be the nurturing Mother, Mother Earth to hold and protect and feed and love her children. And we are the children of Earth as well as the children of the sky or of heaven or of God both God and Goddess, we are the children of that divine union. And it's time we grow up and get past our own childhood and past our own adolescence. And at least some of us become adult enough to help create a world where the corruption is not only exposed, but transformed so that we can move out of the competition mode, out of that paradigm into the paradigm of cooperation and actually begin showing compassion one for the other. This is what I hope to achieve with this video. I hope to achieve an awakening within you, or at least another level of awakening, that you can recognize how things became the way they are, and perhaps get some inspiration as to what you personally can do to change it. Thank you for listening in. Namaste.